Hello everybody, in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna make some blobs turn into text. I have other tutorials about blobs and certainly other tutorials about text, but no blobs that become text. I'm pretty sure I have one where blobs fill up some text, but that's, that's very different, that's a different thing. This is a blob that's gonna morph into becoming text, and then it just um, evaporates or something. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams, and this is Blob Text in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, fine arts, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Experts like uh, me, I have a course on there, you should check it out, but also experts like Jessica Hish. She's an excellent illustrator and letterer. Check out her Lettering for Designers course. If you came here for typography, then, maybe you'll be into that. Hand lettering is that real typography. Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description, skl.sh slash ecabrams4, that's ecabrams and the number four, will get two months of Skillshare free. We're here in After Effects, let's get to it. I'm gonna start by making a new composition. Let's call this the example. Ooh, that's not how you spell. We're working with the 1920 by 1080 preset, we really only need about maybe 10 seconds. That's 10 frames. No, we want 10 seconds of stuff. Wonderful. The background color is black, meaning if you render this out without putting things there, background will be black unless you use an alpha export. But that's it. These are the settings we want to start with and hit OK. Your settings may be totally different. So if we want to have some kind of solution where we have editable text, we better start with some text. So I'm just going to double click on the text tool and start typing things out. And we're going to write out Evan is cool. It's a pretty normal thing. Everybody likes to write this. I don't know why you wouldn't. It's certainly very true, right? What I'm going to do is just hit Y here. I'm going to bring the anchor point of this into the middle center of my text and uh, we'll just scale this up and down as we like. Wonderful. And our goal here is to have this text come out of some kind of blob, some kind of mass, some kind of goop right? We need to round this off. So let's start by basically taking this text and scrunching it together. Let's work the problem backwards. So I'm going to start at about two seconds and twirl into the text, twirl in here, and I'm going to go to this animate tab here. Now, if you're not familiar with text animators, we have tutorials about that here on the channel. So check them out. But we're going to go animate, click this little menu over here, and we're going to go tracking. Now tracking is the distance between, in this case, each character, tracking type before and after. And what we're going to do is set a keyframe. So zero, uh, maybe five, maybe we'll just, we want a little bit tracking further apart than is normal. Go back to about one second, maybe. And we're just going to start dialing this down. I'm just selecting this value. I'm hitting the arrow key to start to dial down. And what I want to do is get to the point I want to get to the point so that people are less angry with me, but I want to get to the point where things are so scrunched together they can't scrunch anymore. It's as scrunched as it's going to get. So there you go. It's packed together and then it expands. Wonderful. That's the perfect thing. That's what I want. It's going to be a, a mass and then it's going to come apart. The way I like to work is to start with general things and refine it and get closer and closer as we go. So the second thing I want to do to this is to have all of the letters kind of twirl out a little bit. It's too regular for my taste. So let's make this a little bit scrunchier, a little bit more random. And we're going to go animate rotation. So we're going to animate the rotation. And this has a range selector on it, but I'm going to add to it a selector, a wiggly selector. And the wiggly selector uh, is basically applying a wiggle to the properties that we're putting on here. And so I'm going to take the wiggles per second down to zero because I don't want it to be wiggling around. The rotation, I'm going to set this at 90. And you'll notice a lot of the letters didn't rotate to 90. If uh, I turn this eyeball off for the wiggly selector, you'll notice they're all turned to 90 degrees. But with the wiggly selector on, it's applying that wiggle to everything. So this is all kind of weird and strange. I'm going to hit a keyframe. I'm just going to pull that keyframe back in time, clicking and dragging, and it's going to snap to the one second mark. And then this will come to be zero. So it's going to start as this jumble of stuff and then move apart and become normal and readable. That's the exact thing I wanted. It should become sort of aligned, and then maybe I want 
the text to just keep sliding a little bit. And I'm just gonna take all these keyframes, I'm gonna hit F9 to easy ease them. And I'm gonna go into the graph editor. I'm just gonna select these and pull their handles. And you can tell here that we're having this big change and then whew, it's kind of getting, getting a little bit slower. So what I wanna do is basically, sorry, we're looking at a speed graph, a value graph would look like this. But if we have a look at the speed graph, you can see the fastest point is here, and then just slows down to a nice crawl. And how does this blob of text get here? Well, in our original, in the intro, we just used a little position change. And so we'll, we might come in and do that later, but let's focus on the core of this thing. Let's solve our core problem first. If this is some kind of goop, if it's some kind of liquid, it doesn't make a lot of sense that it would be super dense. We can't really feel the amount of liquid or goop that this is meant to be. So what I wanna do is call up my scale, set a keyframe for scale, I was hitting S to call up the scale, and then I'm gonna hit the U key to bring up all the keyframes. And you know, at this sort of point, right around here, all of these are kind of distinct letters now. So I'm gonna set a keyframe around there. And here at the beginning, I'm gonna make it quite a bit larger. So it's a little bit larger there. I might take the anchor point here and just kind of shift this around a little bit, just so we're, we're kind of growing from the center there. And that seems to be working for me. I'm gonna ease these, go into its speed graph and shift its handle a little bit here, just so it's kind of in line with what we're doing. And I think this needs to be shifted a little bit. Let's just shift, shift, shift in these things, just so it appears to have the same kind of volume. Let's just make this very, very large at the start, why not? And then, yeah, I think that's, this volume of stuff could become this volume of stuff, why not? And that's great. So we've got this basically doing the thing we want, except it's not a blob yet. So, you know, this. let's try to make good on the promise of the tutorial. So I'm gonna make a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna use a variety of effects to kind of turn this into the blobulous state you were promised. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna maybe work with it at this frame and we're gonna go into the effects. And the effect we're gonna use here is what we call the Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur or however you pronounce that. It's a wonderfully GPU enabled effect. If you're working with a new version of After Effects, you get to enjoy that. Uh, that means it's gonna be making use of my hardware to just work a little bit harder, which is what I expect from my effects. So the Gaussian Gaussian, this blur, I'm gonna set up to 100. It got pretty blurry, that's a pretty blurry thing, awesome. This blurriness has made it, you know, blurry, which may not be specifically what we're after. We might even need to go up even higher, but let's just start at 100 for now. I'm gonna set a keyframe there, and then we move ahead to sort of when this blurriness should resolve, and I think it should be somewhere around here. I'm gonna bring that down to maybe 10, maybe 20, not really sure yet. Again, we're just trying to figure it out. We're just setting these keyframes to play around with it. And for you, it might be totally different values. So just keep that in mind. And a lot of this is also gonna be frame relative. So your frame is different from mine. All right, so just now that we've got that out of the way, blurry text is not blobby text. We, we know that because they're different words. So what I need to apply here is something to clamp down on the alpha values that we're seeing here. So here in my info tab, I can tell that you know, there's nothing out here. And then the RGB red, green, blue values are all 255. These are all white. And the only thing that's changing about them is their alpha values. All right, so the alpha of all of these pixels, very different. So that's the gradient is, is an alpha. So what do I need to do? How am I gonna clamp down on this? Well, to clamp down on values, you might use levels. Levels is a perfectly good way to clamp down on values. So I would put the levels out and I know I'm working with the alpha. So that gives me this, lovely graph, and then I would just pinch this in, and wouldn't it look, it looks pretty blobby, eh? Blobby, blobby stuff, and it, that might be perfectly good for you. That might be where you wanna be. Maybe you love using levels. I'll just turn that effect off. You might also use curves. Curves is a good way to clamp down on values, so you could use curves. Again, go to the alpha graph here, and you can you can get a little bit more uh, subtle control here, and I'm pulling these two handles. You can't really see it very well because it's a black line on a dark gray background. Here, you can kind of see that, oh, we're getting the same kind of result, right? Oh, it's nice and blobby. Pretty cool, nice blobs. All right, so that's another, that's a, a second method to get you there. For this though, because we're working with alpha specifically, I wanna work with the matte choker, M-A-T-T-E choker. And usually the matte choker we're using for green screen chroma keying kind of stuff to deal with, you know, the matte 
and then we choke in on it. But I'm actually going to set the choke to zero. I'm not going to change that alpha bound one way or the other. I don't care. I don't even care. And we're going to set the softness here to two. And we're going to go with this gray softness. So the geometric softness is how smooth, how much smoothing is going to happen. And the gray level softness is how contrasty that edge is going to be. So two, zero, one, and then geometric softness, maybe it's like four, I don't know. And then Something somewhere between uh, 50 and 10, I find, gets me where I want to be. This allows us to really kind of fine tune this edge here. So if this is really high, you see it's kind of blurry. If this is really low as well, it's really chunky. So we kind of have to play around and pick a value that's going to work for the sort of level of detail you're interested in. So I'm using the matte choker only because I find it gives me a little bit better uh, result than, uh, than other things. All right, so what we might need to do is to play around with our geometry a little bit here and to just push things just so we don't have those little voids. I don't really like the voids in there. I like the voids to be revealed as it kind of comes apart. Blurp, there we go, that's some nice voids. So you might need to play with your tracking amount to do that. You could even have to cover little shapes. You could make little solids and, and put them in here, or little shape layers and put them in behind to fill in gaps if you need to. But there we go, this text is kind of blorping, gooping out there, which is pretty great. So I think we've got that first part done. To make the text kind of go away though, let's, I want it to go away, I'm done with you text, you can go now. All you really need to do is take your blurriness here and jack that up so you just increase the blurriness and it goes away which is pretty fun because it's like it's uh, fading away bye goodbye text goodbye it's pretty easy so let's say we go from five seconds to six seconds and it just kind of sinks into the water or whatever what i would add on here though is i would add a turbulent display let's get the turbulent displace out here and the turbulent displace i would just have the amount here maybe have the amount go from something nice and low like a five and keyframe that amount to get nice and big. Get Just go crazy, go nuts. So let's just hit U to bring those up so these are kind of in sync. And you can just take these, easing them by hitting F9 perhaps, going into the graph editor and play around with these values. Maybe it's kind of gradual and then it just goes, blah, goes nuts and then it's gone. Now you might end up with a little, oh, just a little bit left over. You can make that go away by increasing the, uh, increasing the Gaussian blur or just terminate the layer. You're done. So you're done. So you could do that. That's how you would make the thing go away. Now we kind of started this by having had it start kind of little. You notice as you make it smaller, if we scale this down, it turns into just a little circle. It just turns into a little, little puck, which is pretty cool. And so we could have this thing kind of expand to get big and then do its glorping, I suppose which is pretty fun, but we use a little position change to get it in here. So I'm gonna call up the position here, P for position, set a keyframe, toggle my hit U to bring this back. And we just had this thing kind of wee, kind of zoom in from the side. Hi, here comes a blob, what's going on? And you know, what we might do here is just go into the graph editor again and, and so pull that in. If you wanted a little tail on this thing, if you want a little smeary action going on, these blobs are a little, a little smearical, you know? And we would just take this and we would go to the effects and I would add an echo on here. So we're adding an echo and I'm gonna take away the adjustment layer just so you can see what the echo is doing. So I've applied the echo to the text layer, not necessarily to the adjustment layer, because I want this to be unique to whatever elements I put under the adjustment layer. You might come in here and start putting other things on. You might put multiple texts under here. You might put shape layers under here. It's gonna blobify whatever you put under the adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna make this relative to only this particular object. So the echo, I'm not sure if you used an echo before, I don't know your business, but I'm gonna jack this up to say 20 echoes and it's gonna make 20 little echoes here, and each of them are offset in time from the original by negative point zero three three three. I'm gonna set that to be zero. And you'll notice when it's offset by zero, that's that's nothing. Now I'm gonna go down to like point zero one, so point zero one seconds away from this time. We've created this nice little tail, but if we toggle on this, you'll notice it's made kind of a, 
linear tail, right? I don't want that. What I would like is to just fade this stuff out. I'm gonna fade it out using the decay. I'm gonna hold down shift and just keep tapping this thing. And there we go. So we can kind of dial in. We want it so that sort of the last one here is just kind of gone. So maybe 0 0.08 yeah, around there is gonna be correct. Now, if we toggle this back on, you'll notice that the tail is a little bit more tail-like, right? Here it's a little bit more, more taily. It's a little more tapered. And that is because the echoes because they're overlapping each other, creating a gradient, and that gradient is getting clamped by the geometric softness, the matte choker, and the blur. So it's all working together to make that little tail. Now, this also makes some lovely smearing when this uh, tracking is happening. So when these things kind of smear apart, it looks pretty neat. So there you go. It seems to be working out. This thing is transforming into stuff. I think that's pretty wonderful. You might need to play around with kind of offsetting your, your keyframes a little bit and, uh, you know, just playing around with it to make it work. Some of the things I like about this approach, you can now edit this text to say, well, whatever, what, whatever, whatever you like. This makes it useful for sort of lyric video things where you might need to repeat this action over and over again to have this smear going on. I will say that the echo is not super efficient, so you might want to dial down the number of echoes you're working with just to uh, speed the process along or turn it off when you're kind of previewing what you're doing. But the only thing really remaining to do is to style this up, which I generally do by taking the things, pre-composing them, call this the, uh, I don't know, smear text or blob text or whatever you like. And in the intro example, what I did was just applied some layer styles, get a little styles on here, such as the bevel and emboss to give it that uh, crunchy gradient, it's kind of an outdated look at this point, but I did it. So I just went down to the bevel emboss and Change the mode here from screen to dissolve. Same thing here, dissolve, fill effect, just drag that out to give it you know, like some, some pretty banal looking grayness, which is all right. Let me just jack up the size here and now you've got this grainy gradient all over the thing, which is okay. And really what you do with it from here is, is up to you. If you want this to have shadows, you can apply a drop shadow to this. It's totally fine. Uh, or you could just duplicate this thing and make a whole bunch of shadowy replicas of it if you'd like. But uh, that is it. This tutorial is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, animation, fine art, and much, much more. A premium membership at Skillshare gets you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Experts like uh, me. I have a course on there. You should check it out. But also experts like Jessica Hish. She's an excellent illustrator and letterer. Check out her Lettering for Designers course. If you came here for typography, then... Maybe you'll be into that. Hand lettering is that real typography. Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms with an annual membership coming in at under $10 a month. And the first 500 people to use the link in the description, skl.sh slash ecabrams4, that's ecabrams and the number four, will get two months of Skillshare free. You've done it. You've completed the tutorial. You now have blobby text. You're going to need to play around with the keyframes and get the movement exactly how you want it. Uh, if you want to have a look at what we did in the intro file, that's going to be available for download. So head on over to evanabrams.com, pick that up. If you had trouble in this tutorial, please let me know in the comments and we'll try to get you through it as best I can. I'll try to help out everybody who has a question in the comments area. And if you enjoy this kind of thing, please subscribe to this channel. I'm Evan Abrams. This is the EC Abrams channel. And we talk about After Effects, motion graphics, graphics, motion design, all those good things. If you have a suggestion or something you'd like to hear about, please let me know and get at me on Twitter if you have uh, other kinds of questions that you'd like to post to me. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching and go out there and make some blobby text.